welcome. I'm glad you're back for lesson two. I'm all excited about it, and I hope you are too. Uh, on lesson one, we covered Paul says in, and by now I expect that you probably went back and took a look at Paul says in. And, uh, you know, if you haven't looked at Paul says in and you don't know who I'm talking about, you're probably not going to get the drift of this lesson. So go back and look at Paul says in. What he taught us was with his oranges, you know, he taught us that what we actually see is different than what we actually think. That thinking about what an orange is is different from what looking at it is. And that's the new thing that he brought to art. That it didn't, it, the art did not depend on what we thought about it. In fact, it's the other way around. Art changes the way that we think about oranges or anything else. So, now we're done with lesson one. Lesson two is about intent. I think I talked about that a little bit earlier, but it's about the intent of the artist and what really the painting itself looks like at the end and how much they're so different. Uh, you know, I spend my day, I begin my day with prayer. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but I'm a God guy. So I begin my prayer my day with prayer so that I can move through the day noticing all the wonderful things that God has given me and you and all of us and see if I can make some kind of sense out of it with my art in order that you may change your mind about what this is. That's the whole point of my art right now. Now, my intent is not necessarily what you're going to be seeing. Now, I'm going to work on this picture here and probably keep talking. I have had the gift of gab all my life, and so uh, pedagogy is a pretty natural art to me. And uh, I've been a teacher most of my life, and I like teaching, so I think that's why we're involved in this right now. So, the intent of the artist, I look at nature and all the time, I'm all the time interested in what's going on around me. And I begin with prayer and then I start looking at stuff. Uh, things grab my interest and I delve into them. And I'm one of those guys that's able to focus on stuff. And it drives people around me pretty crazy because, you know, I don't always hear what they say to me because I'm focused on some part of the stuff that's around me. And I don't always hear what people are saying to me, which is kind of rude, really. But fortunately, fortunately, I apologize for my inattention and move on. And by watching life all the time, I have learned that life is very varied. It has a lot of different things going on in it. And um, it's those different things that are going on in life that, you know, sort of help me focus focus my attention on what is going on. So I'm always interested in colors and how they're built up and how they're layered. And those layering of colors is what I like to paint. I like to see that yellow is not just a color, but it's a lot of sensations that fall on the chromatic scale in between and around the other colors that are on the scale. So that it's ye the yellow, yeah, it's it goes to almost red and through orange in one direction, and then it gets real pale and it starts moving off into green and blue the next direction. And there's just a lot of different colors of yellow. And when those yellows are put together with each other, they make an energy. And that energy really sparks something in us. We are very, very uh, attuned to color. We're very, very emotionally involved in color. And uh, color is probably the most important ingredient in the art that I make. Because color is what attracts you. Just like it attracts bees, flies, insects, animals. We are <laughs> attracted by color. Animals, I cut grief, the feathers that the birds put out to attract their mates. Uh, all <laughs> the, those baboons with those red behinds. I mean, there's just a lot of things in nature that are attracted by color. And we are one of them, there's no doubt about it. And um, so color is where my main interest is. But also, there's so many variations in life, and the variations are happening in patterns and forms. And those things are the part and parcel, the parts that I put down. I want a lot of different actions, I want a lot of different rhythms, I want a lot of different directions. And yet, it always falls back to color. 
What is the color saying? What is that color emoting to people? Is it interesting? Do people actually want to look at it? Because, you know, it's the color that attracts us, but what else? You know, we got to see some kind of some kind of interest in the painting, or we're not even open to the message that it might have. And now we're back to that intent. What is my intent? Well, the intent that I have for all of my artwork is I want to draw your attention in, hold you for a little bit, and engage you in noticing, seeing, remembering something about nature that's been in your experience, and do that over and over and over and over again. And I have found that if the more vague, less specific about what the individual uh, object or thing that I'm painting, the more I can intrigue your interest because an orange is just going to hold you for so long. I mean, if it's just, if you're in your mind you're thinking it's just an orange, got that covered. But you know what? When that orange starts becoming something else, and that orange is starting to remind you of other things in life, other experiences in life, then, then you're engaged with your own mind and your own experiences, and you can grow and use that painting to grow with. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to expand our own awareness of what this whole experience that we call life is.